before we proceed in discussing the various deductions you could take for your rental property, I need the general information listed on the slide. There are some items I wanted to touch on. Actively participating in managing the property. If you have a property manager, please let me know. This could affect the amount of rental loss you could take on your tax return if your total adjusted gross income is less than $150,000. If you weren't aware, if your adjusted gross income is more than $150,000 and your rental property has a loss, you cannot apply this loss against your adjusted gross income for that year. The loss just doesn't disappear though, as it could be carried forward, but only in years in which your adjusted gross income is less than $150,000. Obviously, there are some exceptions, but this leads me to my next topic. Are you a real estate professional or not? A real estate professional is defined by the IRS as someone having invested more than 750 hours throughout the year in real estate. If this pertains to you, you can actually write off the total loss of your rental property even if your adjusted gross income is more than $150,000. You should document the hours you spent in real estate in case you were to be audited. Now that you understand these basics, I'll move forward in discussing various deductions you can write off on your rental property. All right, time for some good old deductions. Before you start reading the various deductions on the next couple of slides, take a moment to think about all the expenses you incurred this year for your rental property. Think about the various trips you took for the rental property, improvements you made, or repairs you had to deal with. These memories will hopefully help you refresh your mind of the various expenses you incurred for the property throughout the year. I want to inform you that just because a deduction is not listed on the next couple of slides does not mean it's not deductible. If something pertains to your rental property that I didn't discuss on these slides, please let me know so we can talk about it further. Most of the deductions on this slide are self-explanatory. The only thing I want to touch base on are capital improvements versus repairs. Capital improvements are items that add to the useful life of the property itself. Im improvements could be a new roof, a new AC unit, a new water heater, etc. These items are typically depreciated over their useful life instead of being expensed outright. A repair, on the other hand, is expensed outright. A repair could be classified as repairing a sheetrock wall, a plumbing leak, or a shortage in one of your plugs that your electrician has to fix. Again, these items are not adding to the useful life of the rental property and therefore can be deducted 100% in the year in which they were incurred instead of it being depreciated like a capital improvement. So take some time now to review the remaining items on the slide and let me know if anything applies. All right, here are some more deductions. Again, pretty straightforward. Regarding travel, you could deduct your airfare costs if you fly to visit your property. Example, you live in California, but your rental property is in Georgia. You can deduct the travel costs associated with visiting the property in Georgia, again, if the intent of the trip was business. Regarding real estate investors, travel costs could be deductible as well. For example, let's say you wanted to invest in a condo in New York City. If you took a trip to New York City to visit various properties in hopes of buying one, you could possibly write off those expenses. I would recommend you keeping documentation of the properties you visited and any correspondences you kept from your trip in case you were to be audited. With that being said, please review this slide and let me know if any of the deductions will apply. Okay, mileage you drive. For the most of you, your actual office is your home. So anytime you leave the house for anything related to your rental property, it could be considered deductible mileage. Examples could be trips you went to go collect rent, a trip you went to Home Depot to buy some supplies, trip you went to visit the property while a repair is being made, etc. To make sure you are bulletproof against an IRS audit, you need to have a mileage log for all the miles you incurred throughout the year. Instead of handwriting them in a mileage log, you can now download an application on the Apple App Store called MileIQ. It's a great application. It can save you a lot of money in the long run. Last but not least, please provide me with the vehicle information that's listed in the slide as well. All right, so once you determine how many business miles you actually drove within the year, you have two choices on how to deduct the expenses, either by the actual expenses you incurred or by the standard mileage rate that's determined by the IRS for that year. So typically, the standard mileage rate is a better option, but the actual expenses could be a better option for individuals who own a car that weighs more than 6,000 pounds 
due to you receiving a higher than normal depreciation deduction or someone that is leasing a vehicle. Please review the slide and get me the information listed so we could talk further about what option works best for you. All right, home offices. Unfortunately, there isn't a home office deduction on the Schedule E, which is your rental property schedule on your personal tax return. A creative way to get this deduction, though, is if your rental property is your only means of getting the deduction, example, you aren't self-employed or your employer doesn't require you to work from home, is to create a real estate management company and have your rental property pay the management company so you have enough income to offset for the home office deduction. Exceptions could apply if you don't have enough income to offset the home office deduction. So here's an example. You have a home office to manage your Buckhead condo. You create an LLC called Buckhead Condo Property Managers, which you own 100% outright. The Buckhead Condo Rental pays Buckhead Condo Property Managers a fee to manage it all. Therefore, you have received expense on your rental property, Schedule E, but you have income you need to report on your property management company, which is your Schedule C, which is a small business schedule on your tax return. Since you now have income to report on your Schedule C, you could take that home office deduction. Thank you.